Hey, what's up, StarCraft 2 fans? I'm Anaris. It is Monday, and today we're gonna watch some StarCraft. Alright, so in the bottom position, we have Sorrow Rush, spawning as the Yellow Zerg. And in the top position, 12 o'clock, we have the Purple Protoss, none other than Aura's Rush. So a little Rush on Rush action for you today. Speaking of Monday, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Hope it's gotten off to a good, st st good start so far. I know mine has been pretty darn good. I'm really looking forward to December. I think December is actually when I'm going to be able to get my new computer. And I'm actually thinking about doing some sort of live streaming thingy when I get my new computer. While live stream of casting, random game, just pretty much whenever I feel like it. And uh, yeah, then I'll record it and upload it. But for now, let's focus at the game at hand where we do have a pile on it just finishing for Aura's Rush, and for Sorrow, we see his Overlord just completed. Not too sure what they're talking about here in the chat. I'm just going to ignore it for the most part. I did see some, I think I saw a dollar sign in there and some numbers. Maybe they're betting on who's going to win this game. Well, I've got $50 on this Overlord right here coming into the base, exploding and just blowing the Protoss all to hell. But we'll see what happens as uh, OV makes his way up to the top of the map. Meanwhile, the probe is running down to the 9 o'clock position to scout to see if the Zerg player is there. He will be sorely disappointed. Poor probe will be depressed indeed as there is nothing there except for an Overlord who is leaving as we speak. Mean all over here, a couple more Overlords are moving around. Drone is getting ready to throw down an expansion. I do note this went down at around 15 supply, and we do not have a spawning pool just yet, so we can expect to see that and an extractor in the very near future. And over here for the Protoss player, Colonel boosting out his probes, gas completed, pylon on the way, and a gateway at the top of the ramp. So both players are getting off to pretty traditional starts here. Looking at the income tab, you can see that Ors Rush is the only one with gas at the moment. He does have three probes on that. Harvester count 16 to 13, so you actually he is a little bit down in the minerals at the current time because he also is sending out the probe to build. But we uh, we can expect to see this change as the game progresses now. The Protoss player has finally scouted the southern portion of the map, and Sorrow is actually using his drone to go back and forth to keep pylons from being built down here by this probe. There is a little bit of a uh, probe on drone action, but don't think that's really going to go anywhere as the probe does pull out at the last second. Good for him, and the expansion is just about complete. Same for the spawning pool. No gas just yet for the Zerg player, so maybe we won't see one for a little while. I do not know, but for now... Also, we don't see a queen either. There goes the queen. All right. A couple Zerglings on the way, as well as a drone looking up in the Protoss base. He is still doing a little bit of probe harassment there. But we have a Stalker who's being chrono boosted out from the gateway. And second geyser's going down. All right. Well, that's uh, telling me we're going to see some sort of tech play in the very near future here, as he probably wouldn't have built that without the intention of throwing some probes on it rather soon. There they go right there. And there goes the Zealot right there. Not really too much of a chance for that thing to live as it is. Zerg players trying to get a surround on it. Zealot's backing into a corner. But the Zerglings are triumphant as they do head up towards the Protoss base now, possibly to do a little bit of a counterattack, but eh, it's certainly not going to happen as that Stalker gets two free kills right off the bat. Now he is being kited back. In an attempt to micro away from the Zerglings, we can see the health pools. One of them got really low, another one just did a second ago, and now they are retreating because the Zerg player does not want to lose that 100 or that 50 minerals there. And up looking up here, he is continuing to produce Stalkers. Had one over here just to try to drive away this Overlord, which is going to make a clean getaway. And over here, this once again, the Stalker is trying to kite away some Zerglings and get some free kills. And I think this may continue for a little bit. Looking down here in the Zerg base, there is a spine crawler at the base of the ramp. Pretty good position there. And yeah, so this Stalker, once again, he is out for blood, man. He is trying to get this Overlord. And I'm thinking he's not going to get it because obviously there's some angry Zerglings there. But he is continuing to reinforce with more and more units. Here comes two more Stalkers right now. And looking over here, we do have a second gateway going down. And we might see a Robo in the very near future here. That's my prediction, since we're two gates right now, and we've got both of the gases covered fairly early. Here comes the probe. I'm not sure what he's going to do. Look, look, it looks like he's got around 400 minerals. May actually throw down an expansion. Yes, he is. There it goes right there. And the Protoss is actually withdrawing his forces, probably going to sit in a defensive position for a little while because of this expansion. He's not going to have a ton of money in terms of uh, army, 
of course, having spent that 400 minerals on the Nexus, so he is going to have to sit around and defend a little bit. But he does have the Zerg kind of on the defensive as well, of course, having kept that early pressure on the Zerg um, in the first few minutes of the game. The Zerg is continuing to build up his defenses down here. Second and third spine crawler are now finished. Well, third one's a little slow there. All right, there he goes. And looks like this expansion is doing pretty good in terms of saturation. Hallucination is on the way for the Protoss player. And a forge going down here at the base of the ramp outside of the expansion. This will make a very easy to defend position as the Stalkers will be able to stand right behind here and only a, only one or two force fields will be needed to be placed to be, uh, block off this choke right here. So pretty good positioning on the part of the Protoss. And he is capping the geysers finally. We can expect to see those done about just before the same time, or just before the Nexus is completed. There goes one other one is soon to follow, and for the Zerg player, he is capping his second geyser down at his natural. Lair is complete, and looking over here, we're still not seeing the exact tech path that he is going to go. But we'll just have to see what happens as he is researching the Zerg... Um, <coughs> excuse me, the transport upgrade, as well as the speed upgrade. So speed first, transport second. And looking over here, he is actually moving his spine crawlers up some to the uh, to the northern portion of the entrance to his base. And he's also throwing down a spine crawler on the cliff. So this will give him a little bit extra DPS, as we are seeing a Phoenix, just a hallucination though, coming over here, doing a little bit of scouting, not really going to be able to do too terribly much though, as uh, he is retreating now. It is very low hit points, and it is very low in terms of the energy count. This expansion is looking pretty good so far, it's getting there in terms of saturation. And for the Zer, we can finally see a Hydralis Den going down, Zergling Speed is on the way. Protoss Weapons 1 is about halfway completed, and we've got two robotic facilities being dropped here on the top of the main base. And still running off of two gateways, though. Another probe coming out here. I'm getting ready to build second or third and fourth gateways. So four gateway, two robo for the Protoss player, who is sitting in a pretty good position right now. He does have a one cannon here, a second one on the way. And for the Zerg player, he is using his Zerglings to destroy the high-yield uh, high yield expansion rocks. So he, we may see him just creep right over to it, take that expansion, move maybe move his spine crawlers up even more. I'll tell you what, if he is able to get that, he will be in a fantastic position this game. He will really, really be in a, in a good position to uh, win a score a victory over his clanmate. But for now, looking over here, the Roach Warren is complete. And Evolution Chamber is going down. That all those upgrades will certainly help him counter the upgrades that the Protoss player is getting. Here's a Phoenix right here. Great timing to scout out this expansion. Oh man, he sees it right when it's going down. So he will know all, he will know exactly you know he will know exactly what is up with the Zerg player here. Right as the important events are going down. Robotics Bay being thrown down at the base of the ramp uh, in the natural expansion. Do have two observers on the way. And for right now, the Protoss is actually still sitting in a really defensive position. He has a lot of sentries. You can see their energy sitting really high, so he can just throw down the force fields and warp in a bunch of units as he needs to. And looking down here at the Zerg base once more, uh, just kind of sitting around, he does have several uh, Zerglings, several Hydralisks, and he is continuing to move his spine crawlers up towards the middle of the map. He's, he, he's putting them up here to create defensible position for both the entrance to his natural and also to keep an eye on the entrance to the high yield, which is now three quarters of the way complete. He does have a ton of banelings on the way. You can see 16 banelings are being morphed right now, and we have overlords coming, so this to me screams baneling drop. There they go, right there. Oh, I can already tell this is going to be absolutely thrilling to watch. Here comes some more banelings getting ready to head up towards the top right of the map. Here comes some to the top left. Oh man, I'm not sure how the Protoss is going to be able to handle this. Force Fields will not be able to do a darn thing against the Baneling drop. Oh, here they come, a couple dummy overlords as well. Just to fake out the Protoss player, and a couple ones heading up here. The Protoss player is moving out, however, and I don't believe he actually knows about this yet. No, he does not. He Well, nope, now he does, so he is going to see those overlords, and he's tried to drive them off. He is aware there is a drop coming, but here come the overlords into the main base, getting ready to position over the probes, and there they go, dropping the banelings. Oh, man, that was a lot of probes, and here's one more angry bangling coming in here, trying to chase these probes, get some free kills, and one very angry zergling as well. Of course, that Banelings life was cut short by the Colossus, who came in for a revenge kill. And looking over here, we do have more Banelings drops getting ready to come into the natural expansion as the Overlords do move into position, getting ready to come into the mineral line. And here we go! 
Oh, yes! Beautiful! Oh! Oh, man, that was absolutely a thing of beauty right there. Let's look at the worker count now for that. Look at that. 63 to 37. Oh, that was brutal. I think he got a lot more at the natural than he did at the main, but still, that has got to hurt the Protoss player, as he is now deciding to counter this attack by sending out his horses. He does have a good number of Colossi, but the Zerg player has a good number of Roaches as well. Now, here come the Colossi. Try to do some damage to the Roaches. They are... Well, a ton of force fields going down, blocking off some of these forces, keeping them from getting in position to be able to do damage to the Colossi. As the Colossi do take pot shots at the additional spine crawlers being morphed in here, I'm not sure what the Zerg player can do about this at this point, as if he continues to uh, place down these force fields and cut off the Zerg player, he could uh, put some force fields down here and come down and have a field day with this expansion. And the Zerg player is trying to get into position D to DPS down the Colossi and maybe get one! Oh my god, that's so close! Yes, he gets one! And three Colossi left to go, so a couple reinforcements over here, distracting the Zerg player. This was a very good split move by the Protoss, able to pull the bulk of the Zerg forces away with just four Stalkers, allowing him to finish off the rest of it. And so now, the Protoss is doing a little bit of micro here with the Colossi, trying to drive back the Zerg forces. Zerg realizing he is not in a good position at this point, he is going to have to retreat. Protoss continuing to reinforce with more Stalkers down here. The Colossi are doing exactly what they are meant to do, which is just rip through tons of Zerg tons of light units and we've also got some roaches in here but it's just not enough especially with the colossi micro and of course they do have the ledges here should they decide to uh to run up and run back over the other side forcing the roaches to run around the ledges of course going up on the ledge would not simply be enough because the overlords do give vision to the zerg player but for now the zerg is continuing to uh, place his creep down unfortunately that lasted all of half a second as that creep tumor was destroyed very quickly and there goes another building right there and the spine crawler is not going to live very long whatsoever here is with zerg's new force it looks like he's got mostly hydralisks he's got some roaches and a couple zerglings and i think i see a baneling in there as well that poor guy has got to uh, hate his job right now but Nothing else really going on in the Protoss base. Looking at it real quick, you can see he did uh, throw out a couple more units. But one other engagement here from the Protoss trying to pick off some uh, some Zerg units with the Colossi. He is really abusing this range, just picking off anything that he can. And looking over here, I'm not sure if the Zerg is going to be able to bust through this attack, especially since uh, Ors is continuing to reinforce it. Here comes another engagement. Roche is in a great position to do some damage to the Stalkers. Of course, with no force fields, the Zerg can get a lot better of a concave on these Protoss units. However, the Overlords are still giving vision to the Zerg, but there are plenty of Stalkers here and a ton of DPS from the Colossi. Now five in number. A couple of them are pretty badly hurt. But it does not matter as the Zerg player loses a ton of units having to withdraw the remainder of his forces back to the uh, the top ramp of his base. Unfortunately, this move is going to cause him to lose the high yield where he does have a number of drones. You can see the harvester count once more, 56 to 53. We can expect to see Sorrow's uh, harvester count go down fairly quickly there. And uh, the Zerg player is getting the burrow upgrade that'll help out a little bit with the regeneration abilities of the roaches. But he also has a couple corruptors. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough though as the Protoss player is now in a fantastic position. Look at this, he's even got his own high yield, his other expansion, or his, uh, his first expansion fully saturated once again, his main pretty much mined out, so he did transfer those probes over, but the Protoss is once again keeping the Zerg very much on the defensive, knocking out creep tumors, knocking out free kills with the Hydralisks, the expansion is gone, and right now we are left to sit at the Zerg base right here with four spine, crawler, spine crawlers being morphed up here at the top of the natural expansion. Of course, the Protoss player could move in here at any moment with his Colossi, and there goes some more spine crawlers right there, and second or another hatchery is going down at the top of the ramp. It looks like he does have about seven. 750 minerals, so he could he could use an extra hatchery to spin that down a little bit and try to make a solid push here. I guess there was a little bit of a pause, but here comes the Protoss once more, making a push just before the spine crawlers are completed. You can see they're about 80%. There they go, right there, and now the Zerglings are going in. Unfortunately, lost a couple of units there, but the Zerg is saying, oh, well, you know what? This is pretty much going to be it, so I'm just going to move all my forces in right here. The uh, corru Corruptors are trying to do damage to the Colossi, but like I said, it's just not enough. Look at that. He has got seven Colossi there on the field, more than enough to be able to take some damage from the Corruptors and still keep on shooting. So that was pretty much the GG from Sorrow there, allowing Oris to take this victory. And hope you guys enjoyed this game, and we will see you guys later.